my calculations by much. I think I just about figured out how to make time travel possible in the entire room. How would you all like to help me out with a little experiment today? Great, 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 great. great. Yeah, I got I got a couple of things I have to do. So uh, how many of you uh how you guys been doing? Everything been going okay? Yeah. Yes, you're all right? You're all right? Good, good, good. Have you ran into Dr. Dark yet? Not yet. It kind of worries me because you know it's been a while since he's uh showed up. I'm wondering what is he up to? You know, I know he's always up to something, especially this time of year. This is the time of year that things go crazy poo poo for him. I'll be right back. I gotta get something else from the lab. He always tries to get us back because of the feet jumping thing. Oh, you know what? I bet he's nervous because it's just about Christmas time. I bet he is. Yeah. No! What are you planning on doing with the old time machine? Putting you back in it and sending you back to the future. Oh, I don't want to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, it seems like last time you did that, you uh, really goofed things up like always and got power surge here. Yes, Something I did. you've not seen in a while. What's going on with that? I have no idea what's happening to that goat-loving ninny. I don't even know where he's at. I you haven't seen what? him, and that's for the best. At one point, you were the one who got the goat-loving ninny here. It's all your so, fault. Well, it didn't work out like I planned. I didn't have Gerald at the time, so... Nothing works out like you plan it, dork! <laughs> hey! Yeah, yeah, all of our all of our local tests have been working out now that I have Gerald here. So. Oh, well, See, if I wouldn't have had him, then power search wouldn't have worked out. Oh, yes, maybe you should send Gerald back to the future with you also, then, huh? That might not be a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... All right, so... Hey, how are you doing with your britches, anyway? I know that you said that my belt is as tight as possible. Every year he loses his pants. Did you know that? Every Christmas time he loses his pants. Yes, every year. It's every Christmas. I we have been for, what, about 40 years now? Something like that? Yeah, yeah. Every Christmas, every Christmas. Blah, blah, blah. This one's going to be different, though, it's mister. Quite funny. Different? Yes, different. It's going to be different. Oh, wonderful! This year's going to be different. He's going to lose his pants probably twice now. Ah! No, 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 I've got Gerald, mister. Also, Gerald's going to be losing his pants at Christmas time, too. Huh? No, Gerald's got suspenders. He's not going, these aren't going anywhere. Suspenders don't work for the door. They always pop off and they fall to the ground. It doesn't and work. I've had buttons that malfunction. I've had suspenders that pop me in the face. I've had pants that explode. Expando pants! That was great. Oh, stop telling me about the expando pants. Yeah. He, he put the wrong button on and they expanded him. Pop! Down to the ground they went. He admitted the pair of pants that were going to shrink to fit my size. He was actually trying to help me, he says. But they didn't work out because I think they malfunctioned and they fell off in front of 
the entire science expo. Yes, I know, I know. You've always had two thousand kind of people saw my heart-shaped undies. <laughs> nah. He has had wardrobe malfunctions for the last thirty some years. Ah, well, you know what? Like I said, this one's going to be different because. Gerald and I have crunched the numbers, we've looked over the problems, we've looked at the systems and all the things that are going on, and I think that we got it figured out this year, mister. Oh, well, very, very good, very good. He's got it all figured out. It's to be a first time. That's right, so I'm going to go, and I figured that you could explain some of this stuff to Gerald, and uh, you're just going to hang around, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's going to hang around. Hang around! Hang around! Yeah, that's not great. even going to bother you. He just wants to watch. Well, you know what? It would be What's fine. We would be, we would be more than happy to have you hang around. Really? Yes, yes. we'd love to have Joe. Where are we going to hang from? Oh, I don't know. We'll find somewhere to hang him from. With those suspenders, we can hang him just about anywhere. I'm uh, just about finished with the calculations. You just need to stay here, okay? You just stay here. And uh, he's not going to bother anybody. He's just here for scientific research. Uh, yeah, that's good, that's good, yeah. from you, that's for sure. Yeah. Ah, fine. Well, just, just stay here and watch, okay? And don't let the dog give you any trouble. He's a flea bit than mutt. Yeah, it's just... All right, just stay here, okay? All right, don't be doing anything horrible to him, Dr. Sparky. He's not done anything to you. I won't do anything to him. They treat me horrible every year. I won't do anything to you. It's over. Quite all right. Just Robert about to have this thing broken and ready to go. Don't let them talk bad about me while I'm gone. Mm. All right, stay right here. Robert, back off. Back off. All right, all right, all right. So, Gerald, how's it going, buddy? I hear you're quite the uh, computer whiz. Yes, yes, yes. Why don't you come over here and let me give you a little uh, a look, see at what we're doing here. Are you sure you should be doing that, Dr. Sparky? Oh, you know what? Gerald's a good guy. I have a feeling that uh, God's got a big plan for Gerald's life. God. As long as he gets away from Dr. Dork. Yeah, well, one day he probably will. I'm going to show you he my... He uh, very long. No, yeah. he's not been known to hold on to help very much. <clears throat> as you can see, I have, I have used an ordinary iPad um, to program my time machine. We no longer have to get inside the time machine in order to go back in time. Great. I can actually send the entire room back in time just using the iPad and the time machine. Even the ones in the back? Even the ones in the back. Everyone can. I want to show you all something really quick. Not impossible. I'll show you how to do that. Why do it now? Of course. Uh, as you can see, these lights that are uh, around the room, the, this lighted wire is actually plugged into the time machine. I have the purple, which is our negative wire, and the orange, which is the positive wire. Once those light up and they come into the time machine, they activate the flux capacitor. This here is considered the flux expander. It's what makes the entire room time travel possible. You see, inside the time machine, once you go inside it, whatever is inside transports to whatever time and date that we program on the keypad. And with, by using this simple remote, no matter where you go, all you have to do is hit home and boom, you're back. And so this remote is what makes time travel possible as far as for you to return. Well, I've been doing some experiments because I felt like that um, it's not fair for me to be the only one to do time travel. How many of you guys would like to do some time travel? Yay. Yeah. So I thought that it would be only fitting that I fix it up where everyone could go back in time. There's a little bit of a problem. For some reason, we're only passive observers when you go back in time. This way because all you can do is see what was happening and you can't affect it this way. Whereas when you go back in time, you're actually there. So my calculations have not worked out quite, quite right yet. So when we go back in time, the whole entire room and everything that is within a 50, mile, a 50 foot radius of these lights here actually will go back in time. 50 foot, that means up radius, meaning all the way around it. So like, uh, come here, let me show you something about Electra. If, if Electra is right here, and let's talk about radius for a few minutes, those of you that do not understand radius. Electra is there. If I stay five foot away from Electra at all times, that would mean everything around here in this circle would go back in time. Five foot. Imagine that 50 foot radius, okay? Now, if anyone was to leave the property at any given time during the time travel, they would walk through that door and they might possibly exit out of our time zone and get lost. 
So any time during time travel that you try to make an exit out of this room, you could actually get lost in time if you step out after we've already made our dissension. So it's increasingly possible for that to be a problem. So we have to make sure that no one goes in or out that door just a few moments prior to our time travel expedition. All right, because we don't want to lose you back in 1979. 1979? Yep, that's where we're headed. 1979. Uh, 1979 was a very big year for us in the science world, and especially for Dr. Dawson. I'm sorry, not 79, but 76. In 1976, it was uh, 35 years ago. Oh, it's okay for you to come in for now. We're not traveling yet. 35 years ago, something big happened to Dr. Dork. And, uh, Speaking I want of Dr. Dork, you guys really shouldn't make fun of him all that much. He isn't that bad of a guy. No, actually, Dr. Dork isn't that bad of a guy, but he gives us a lot of trouble. And uh, increasingly, I wonder why everything started that way. Hmm, I can show you that, actually. By taking you back to December 23rd, right here, 1976. That was the red letter day that everything happened. December 23rd, 1976. You see, on the 22nd, when we were just kids, we had had a uh, Christmas concert. And Dr. Dort was dressed up in his little costume, and he was up on the stage, and he was singing along with all the other children. And in the middle of that song, he dropped his pants on the ground. And it embarrassed him quite a lot, in fact. Um, he was very, very embarrassed at that concert. I'm not going to take you back in time to see that because that was a rather embarrassing moment for him. Where I do plan to take everybody is, I do plan to take you back in time to the very moment that him and his mom was having a conversation and Dr. Dork decided that he would turn on God forever. And at that point, the young man finally changed everything. It's actually quite sad because at that moment in time is when he decided he would walk away from God and he vowed to get even with anybody else. In fact, at that point was when he decided that there was no God. You see, Dr. Dark grew up in a church just like I did. In fact, we went to the same church, and we were in the same concert. And unfortunately, uh, for Dr. Dork, things changed. And he became so angry and so bitter toward Christians that he began to harass us. And if you're interested, over the next few weeks, I'll take you back in time and I'll show you everything that happened that brought us to the point where we're at today. Well, I want to be just like Dr. Dart, so that would be very useful for my research. Oh, okay, I'll show up. sure. Well, well, we'll do that. Are you guys ready for our experiment? Now, now, according to my calculations, this is the first time I've tried to attempt to take this many people back in time. I have tried. I have. I have tried this and attempted this alone in in here without anyone here, and it has worked successfully. But let me just explain the rules. Are you ready? We are going to be passive observers. Do you know what that means? No. That means when we come into the room, you will see Dr. Dork, because I've been to this very exact location and this exact time, so I know what's going to happen. This entire room is going to transport back in time to December 23rd, 17, 1976, and you will see Dr. Dork when he was a kid. Him and his mom are actually having a conversation, and this is the moment that everything went bad. I can trace everything back to this day and time when everything happened. Are you guys ready for that travel? Yeah. Now just remember, none of us will be able to interact with them at all, okay? We'll not be able to interrupt the conversation. They won't be able to see us nor hear us, okay? So just because they can't see you or hear you doesn't mean you should be talking loud because I want everyone to hear exactly what happened so you'll understand what happened, okay? During the time travel, while we are back in time, please remain in your chairs. And whatever you do, do not leave the room because you could be left 35 years in the past, okay? We do not want to leave you 35 years in the past. So please remain in your seat and be ready. Are you guys ready for some takeoff? Okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to kill the lights until we land because we need it pretty dark for this time travel experiment. All right, now, we will set destination. Well, 23, 
1976 at 11 o'clock a.m. Um, what I do want to remind you of, we are actually, where we're at right now, is going to wind up being Dr. Dark's bedroom. Right here is where this will land, and that will be the door to his bedroom over there. Now, we are landing just before he comes into his room, before he's sent to his room. And so what I need us to do is we need to make us leave. Uh, why don't you three go stand over there along that wall, and I'll join Gerald over here on this wall as soon as we get done with takeoff. All right, time circuit's engaged. And let's set our destination for Russia. Lightning strike there. Pin. Yes, you have a question? What is Dr. Dork's costume? What is his costume? Yeah, what was it? Oh, he was a, he was an angel, believe it or not. <coughs> yes. He was wearing white trousers and a white shirt. And I've got to get us, as you can see here, Gerald, I know you'll appreciate this kind of thing here. Um, you, we will actually be on a map when we locate him. So we're going to land, see I can direct through the iPad, I can do this. I'm actually working on an iPhone version of this, so it'll be more compact and more usable. Yes, but for right now we'll use the iPad. So I'm going to take us right here to Russia, right where it happened. All right, and we can drop the pin right here. We'll land at his house. Okay, so now I have that selected. Now, time to engage the time circuits. Are you all ready? Yeah. Okay, let's get ready for takeoff. I will need this button to activate. And time travel activation on. Start your engines. Oh, rat! Come on. Engine trouble. Mm. My calculations is, huh, when we get this up to 88, huh, you're going to see some serious doo-doo. <laughs> do it! Ah. Blew it up! I think... I think it did it. Caused that whole problem. He lost his pants, 
stopped believing in God and he said that he would prove it no matter what he had to do. And so he has spent the rest of his 35 years trying to torment us and torture us. I've seen enough. Hold on to your hats. Let's go home. No. No. I what you look like. I'm oh, no. That's one thing I have to tell you. You cannot run into your past self. It could destroy the space-time continuum forever. No, this, this is kind of tricky. Uh, everybody stay put. Let me make sure we're back. Hey, Dr. Sparky, what are you doing? We are back. Go ahead and turn the lights on. Oh, are you okay? I thought we were. Oh, uh, no, nothing. Just, just wondering. He's working on an experiment in my lab of all places. Oh. You see what I mean, Gerald? You understand well, where we're coming from? Well, I see your point, but at the same time, Dr. Dark is a good guy, and he's awesome. So, and I want to be just like him, so he was just a kid, so he just made a decision, and it was just a life-changing decision, but he's moving in the right direction. You Science think so? is moving the opposite direction of Christianity. Science is the right way. Science is moving the opposite direction of Christianity. Well, I tell you what, why don't we show you uh, next week when I get this, uh, Bugs worked out of this. Why don't I show you next week what happened with Short Circuit? Unfortunately, next week I need you not to be here because I cannot risk you running into your past self. It can totally disrupt the space time continuum. That's fine by me. She's not going to be here. That's fine by me. Mm, excuse me. Um, one thing you must understand that you are in a very dangerous place right now because you are with a very dangerous man. Any time that. Oh, I'm fine. Mm, don't you think he's in danger right now? Yes. yes. He's especially in danger if he's going to nail me. Oh, I'm scared. I better get going. Well, now here he is. Here yes, there I am. What have you been doing? <coughs> oh, we just was working on a little experiment. Oh, no, a little experiment. Just a little you experiment. You mean not a little experiment? No, a very, very small, tiny, minute oh, experiment. Gosh. What kind of experiment were you working on? Oh, you know, um... What were they working on? They're going to your past self and see you as you gave up believing in God. What do you mean as you went back in time? Are you aware of what happened on December 23rd, 1976? Well... The day after our Christmas program? Yes, I remember the day after the Christmas program. I made the decision that would change my life forever. And that was? It was the best decision I ever made, by the way. It was the day that I would decide to prove you and the church and the existence of God all wrong. And for the last 35 years, how well has that worked for you? Not so good. But I'm working on it. And you know, by the way, the light bulb did not happen overnight either. This is true. So it's a process, and I will prove you wrong. Isn't that right, Gerald? Yes, that's right. Yes. So they were. What, are you, you, what were you doing in the past? Were you trying to change me or do something different to me actually we can't even we can't even talk to you you're talking to me right now no i mean in the past we couldn't even talk to you you can't talk to me in the past no no you see when that, I, when doesn't, I take that doesn't you, make any sense in the past um, when i take you back in time yeah. you cannot talk you don't even to know anyone what to or affect anything sorry you, all you, right you can't have interactions you took notes okay so good all right so mental notes from gerald and I just, I know that it's going to happen, mister. You know it's going to happen. Well, good luck with that, because you know what? I know the real reason. Your mommy was trying to talk to you, trying to get you to give in the church. You remember that conversation? 
It's a private conversation between you and your mother. All right, mister, if it was a private conversation between me and my mama, then what did my mama call me all the time? Little darky. No! <laughs> we were there. No! Oh, how did you do that? I don't understand. Actually, with my new programming on my iPad, this uh, app for everything now. Ah, uh, you and your Apple products. I am still a PC guy. That explains why you crash all the time. <laughs> Constantly in need of repair. All right, so fine. You and your flippin' in mud and your your pink-headed little sh your little squeaky girl and all of you people can just die, ah, whatever. Hey. And all of you snotty brats too. Oh. Dr. Doc's mom was a Christian. She was trying to get him to give at church. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, he lost his cheerfulness quite a long time ago. You know, I need to get this time machine fixed and get it repaired because I'd like to take you next week to see actually how he wound up getting a hold of you. How would you like to go back in time and see what happened with Short Circuit? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can make a couple of trips if I can get this correctly. I might be able to even go back in time and find out what was going on when he lost you. Wouldn't you like to have that story out? Hmm. You guys want to go on another trip next week? Yeah! yeah. All right, well, I've got, there's a malfunction in this program on the iPad. I'm going to have to go work on this. We'll go back to the lab and see what we can do to get this thing figured out. We'll see you next week, kids. No, I'm sorry. I'm having a malfunction with the time machine. I've got to get these time circuits to work. Bye!